says he's the only real Republican. Decide for yourself when you hear presidential candidate Ron Paul in our Sunday Spotlight. He's a Republican who wants American forces out of Iraq. Did you hear what I said? Republican who wants forces out of Iraq. Ron Paul, he is our Sunday Spotlight next. Rudy Giuliani wants you to take back what you said. Have you thought about it? Have you decided you're going to take it back? Yeah, I've thought about it, and I've decided I'm not going to take it back because there's no reason to. I think he's the one that's confused. Well, let's talk a little bit about Iraq because that was certainly the big subject that's uh, elevated your prominence. Right. Um, I'm going to let you argue with the President of the United States because he held a news conference this week, and he said some very important things that I, I get the feeling you're going to be uh, very much against. We're going to start with what the President says when he's asked about whether it's time to start getting some of the troops out of there. Here's what the President says. You're asking me how much longer we have yet to even get all our troops in place. Yet to even get our troops on, in place. How do you respond to that? Well, that, that worries me because uh, he's had uh, how many years now to do that? Four years to get them in place. Four years to have a victory. That worries me. It worries me about the, the spread of this war into Iran. Uh, there's a lot of conditions there over there that could worsen. So that's why I'd like to get our troops out of harm's way. I didn't want them to go there in the first place. But hold on. You know what the president would say to you? In fact, I'm going to let him say it. He doesn't want politicians, his words, telling the military what they need to do. Let's roll the president. Go ahead. And so, therefore, the decisions I made are all aimed at getting us to a different position, and the timing of which will be decided by the commanders on the ground, not politicians here in Washington. Politicians in Washington. I think he's referring to you, Congressman. Well, well there's a little bit of truth to that. There was one appropriation bill I voted against, which uh, micromanaged the war, and that was one of my reasons for voting against it. He is com commander of the troops. But we have a lot to say about uh, the uh, policy, and we have everything to say about the funding. So Congress is still very, very important. And unfortunately, I think one of the reasons why we're in this mess is because we didn't follow the Constitution and have an up and down vote on declaration of war. John Edwards said something interesting this week. He said, in fact, that the war on terror is nothing more than a slogan, a bumper sticker, that it's not really a strategy. Here's what the president says about that. This notion about how this isn't a war on terror, in my view, is is naive. Doesn't, doesn't reflect the true nature of the world in which we live. You know, the lessons of September the 11th are these. We've got to stay on the offense. That's, a, that's, a, that's an argument that's gotten a lot of print this week. What's your take on it? Well, uh, t terrorism is a tactic. It's not an enemy. It's just a tactic that the various enemies use. So you can't have a war against a tactic. And that's where the flaw policy is flawed. So you agree, uh, you agree with John Edwards then, that this is a, well, a, more, of a, more of a slogan than a tactic? Well, you have to define the enemy. It would be much safer to say that we have uh, a reason to attack and eliminate the Al-Qaeda because they were responsible for 9-11. But we're not doing that. I mean, that was one resolution I supported wholeheartedly and the funding to go after the Al-Qaeda. But we forgot about the Al-Qaeda. We allowed them to go into Pakistan. We're friends with Pakistan. We finance Pakistan. They're a military dictatorship, and they have a nuclear weapon. And we do nothing. We, we allow that to happen at Tora Bora. To, to go over and start a needless war, undeclared war in Iraq. So the well, policy is seriously flawed. Let me stop you there. When you say a, a needless uh, war in Iraq, there is still uh, the question as to whether or not Iraqis want us there. Uh, I know there's been several polls taken. Let's, let's hear what the president says about this, and then we'll uh, get your take on the other side, sir. Okay. We are there at the invitation of the Iraqi government. This is a sovereign nation. 12 million people went to the polls uh, to approve a constitution. It's their government's choice. If they were to say leave, we would leave. How do you respond to that? Well, I think that's very good because they're about to do that, and I think that's encouraging that he's come around to that point because the majority of the legislators in Iraq now are very sympathetic to our leaving. There's a coalition building between the Sunnis and Sardar, and they're talking about nationalism, and they're talking about getting us out. And the Republican leadership, including those in the Senate, are very seriously considering the fact that if they ask us to leave, they'll leave. And I think that is very, and, and very you, good if, news. And if you were president of the United States, you'd pull the plug the very next day? I, I would. I would uh, just write an order to say uh, no, no more policing on the streets, uh, no more Humvees walking down the street just becoming victims. Would you be worried about the bloodbath that would take place and certainly the victimization of the Sunnis in this case since yeah, they really well, are the smaller number here? 
Yeah, I'd, I'd be concerned, but there's reason for the uh, Sardarites, the Shiites, and the Sunnis to get together because they, they do not like Iran. They'd like to get rid of them, and they don't like the Al-Qaeda. There was never any Al-Qaeda or Iranian influence in Iraq until after we got in there and messed it up. So I'm much more optimistic about what would happen. Look at the hmm. tremendous things that's happened with uh, uh, Vietnam since we left. Yes, uh, there were a lot of problems, but they're, they're a trading partner. We invest in them. Look at how we do with China. We didn't have to fight and kill Chinese. Uh, of course, we tried to do that in, in Korea, but, but now we trade with China. We, we depend on them. They're our bankers. So I think a lot of good things could come of it. You, the you biggest important know, thing is Americans wouldn't be killed any longer. You, you, you sound like a pro forma 1930s isolationist. No, I'm not, no, I'm not an isolationist. I am a non-interventionist because the founders of this country that, that, that I listened to carefully mm -hmm. were very much, they were not protectionists at all. They were free traders. They wanted trade and travel and In fact, and that's your point. You say, you say you're the true Republican when it comes right. to uh, the Republican candidates. Right? right, and Robert Taft was an example that I used. He didn't want to be in NATO. <laughs> and uh, there was a strong element in this country that didn't want to go into World War I and World War II. Okay. Even the presidents advocated peace. We'll never take you to war in Europe. And I like that old saying, no, don't go to war in Europe and don't go to war in the Middle East. It's best for Americans to stay at home, mind our own business, become a wealthy, prosperous country, set a good example, and they'll want to emulate us. We can't force our ways on other peoples Con to the point of a gun. Congressman, we're going to have to leave it there. <laughs> Certainly a delight talking to you, sir. Thanks so much for being part of our Sunday Spotlight. Great.